Hello, and welcome to Architectural Medicine. My name is Tim Rossi, and today we're going to talk about the overview of architectural medicine. What is architectural medicine? For some, there may be confusion as to what this is, and so we're going to discuss this topic and talk about its purpose and its focus. At first, you might be a bit perplexed about these two words, architecture and medicine, next to each other. After all, what does medicine have to do with architecture? That's a good question, and to address this, let's take a look at the focus of architectural medicine, which is health and wellness in the built environment. Have you ever considered the impact that the built environment has on your health? Perhaps you're aware of how materials such as lead and asbestos can be a health hazard. And maybe you heard certain types of mold can have a negative impact on your health. But what about mental and emotional health? Can the built environment have an impact on not just physical health, but on mental and emotional well-being? And if it does, how? To answer this question, let me ask you a question about your experiences in architecture. Have you ever walked into a building that was dimly lit, or perhaps dark and cold? How did it make you feel? What about being in a room that was messy, or a building that had such strong, busy patterns, and colors that impacted your ability to think? Perhaps you were so distracted that you were not able to think clearly. What about places with loud noises, or strong smells that were unpleasant? How did you feel? How did it affect your thinking? And in considering these different scenarios, how about the opposite? Have you ever been in a room where you felt very relaxed and comfortable? Maybe there was calming music. Maybe the lighting was more enjoyable. And perhaps the shapes, textures, and colors of the spaces allowed you to feel more calm and relaxed. How about being in a room that had less patterns, that were less busy, designs that were visually less distracting as well as being more quiet? Were you able to think more clearly? Were you able to be more calm? making it easier to think for working or studying? The built environment does have an impact on how you feel and how you think, as well as how it impacts your physical health. And architectural medicine works to bring this into clarity. You may have heard of healthy building, and while this field has provided and continues to provide great developments, they are typically focused on physical health, such as topics discussed earlier with lead paint and mold. While Healthy Building has been researching these physical impacts of the built environment, architectural medicine includes the larger scope, an impact of the built environment on complete health, physically, emotionally, and mentally, or psychologically. In the past 10 to 15 years, healthy hospital design has brought great awareness and focus on health in the building world. Yet what about the rest of the built environment? Shouldn't all buildings be focused on good health and wellness? With fields such as environmental psychology and neuroscience and architecture, or neuroarchitecture, research on the impacts of built environments on the emotions and psychological well-being are helping to better understand these topics. For instance, research within the past two decades in neuroscience have shown that certain shapes and designs, such as those with sharp angles, have shown a physiological response in the amygdala the part of the brain that results in an increase in fear and stress and the common fight or flight response. These studies are showing that there is a physiological response to certain shapes, and shapes that are more curving and materials that are softer can reduce a negative or stressful reaction, which can be more comforting to the senses and can provide more relaxation. With these different fields working together to consider the many pieces of the jigsaw puzzle of health and buildings, the future of these developments can provide better wellness in architecture. This is an example of direct physiological responses to the designs of shapes and forms in the built environment. By having less stress, this allows the body to heal more quickly, whether in a hospital setting post-surgery or in the everyday life of the human experience. A decrease in stress can allow for better wellness and well-being. Did you know that a study done in the 1980s by Dr. Roger Ulrich showed that groups of patients whose post-surgery stays in hospital rooms that had a view of nature and greenery, as opposed to the other group that had a view of a brick wall, showed a distinct difference in shorter post-operative hospital stays. Not only did they have shorter hospital stays, they also took fewer potent pain relief medications from that of the patients in the similar rooms with windows facing a brick building wall. 
This study by Dr. Ulrich, titled View Through a Window May Influence Recovery from Surgery, was published in the Journal of Science in 1984. This began research that is commonly referred to today as evidence-based design and has been a driving force in the redesign of hospitals and the development of healthy hospital design. This can also be connected to health in the built environment when it comes to the topics of quality of life. According to the American Medical Association, stress is the basic cause of more than 60% of all human illness and disease. And if you are constantly around these types of stressors in your built environments, then it is much harder to be relaxed and more at ease, and this increases chronic stress in one's life. In today's modern world, there is also an increase in the amount of time spent indoors, with some people spending up to 90% of their lives inside of a building. Our architecture and built environments, whether it be those of our homes, our workplace, or the cities we live and work in, can have big impacts on how we are either at ease or not at ease, which can impact our emotional, psychological health, as well as our physical health. When you view these two words, architecture and medicine, it may seem obvious that architecture is focused on buildings and medicine is focused on providing health to those who are sick or suffering. And if you question how the built environment impacts human health, physically, mentally, and emotionally, you have to view both of these fields together to gain a full picture of health and wellness and how this impacts quality of life. After all, when was the last time that your doctor considered or evaluated your built environment in terms of your health? And what about architecture? When was the last time an architect asked how your building is impacting your health and wellness? Architectural medicine works to bridge these two fields and to gain insights into how these professionals can work together in a better format. And being that there are already many groups who are either involved in the facets of this work directly or indirectly, we also strive to bring these fields into more common knowledge and to promote this knowledge and information that may not be as well known. These other fields range in scope from public health and epidemiology to the newer fields of biophilia and biomimicry. When you begin to think about these topics, you might begin to wonder how your spaces and your places impact how you think and feel. And this is part of the goal, to bring awareness to these concepts and topics. And so this is a brief overview on the topics of architectural medicine and how the built environment impacts overall health and well-being. In future videos, we will explore how these fields can become better integrated and discuss the potential connections as well as the concept of the architectural doctor and the role of this professional. This process can build bridges to create better built environments for health and support integration between these professions. Join us next time for other topics on architectural medicine, discussing the many facets of buildings and structures and how they impact human health from the single structure to the large city. You can follow us on social media. Check out our website and stay tuned to this channel with more topics on architectural medicine. Links to citations in this video are available in the video description. Thanks for watching. Until next time, be well.